what's up everybody Silas here and today I'm going to make a short video and you can probably guess from the title what it's about but I just want to kind of talk about the uh, quote unquote adventure that I've had over the last week with a kidney stone now I know most people would think that's not really an adventure but one thing that really helped me through this past week and there was times that it was scary because I'd never been to a hospital never had any type of surgery before didn't know what to expect and so uh, reading other people's stories online really helped me a lot and it, it gave me uh, confidence helped conquer my fears of what was going on that way I kind of just understood what I was facing it gave me an idea of the potential things that could happen that sort of stuff and obviously you have to be careful what you read on the internet because if you read enough symptoms you'll find out that you're dying so I just tried to stick to testimonies of people that had gone through similar situations to me that way I had realistic expectations and they, they helped me a lot but I'm not gonna just do that because if I was just doing that that would be kind of boring so while I'm out here doing that uh, I'm out here at my place where I have a bunch of cars and junk and whatnot and I want to try to clean that up a little bit today my kidney still hurt pretty good so I can't really go drive my forklift at work so I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna run the excavator So hopefully that'll be fun. And today I am using a lav mic, the uh, Rode Wireless Go and a Rode uh, Lavalier Go. And hopefully that'll improve the audio quality. We'll find out. This is my first test. It may sound better. It may sound worse. I may have to tweak it a little bit, but I, I think I have it set up. I've done a few tests, and from what I can tell, it sounds pretty good. And please remember, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. One cool thing about this mic setup I have now is like this. I can put my camera down and I can drive with both hands and both feet and I can still talk to you. So I'm hoping this setup really works out good. That's kind of what my kidney stone felt like when it hit me on not this not yesterday yesterday was Tuesday today is Wednesday but the previous Tuesday at about 2 30 in the morning um, I woke up there was a noise in the house it was just something fell out of the closet and about 30 minutes later this is what it felt like just outside my kidney in my lower right flank on the back of my body it hurt like crazy I mean it was insane pain the worst pain I've ever felt I've bruised ribs I've fallen 12 14 feet through the air and hurt myself landed on my side I've, I've hurt myself pretty bad. I've had stitches. I've been hit in the head with a hammer. There's been all sorts of things happen. And I have never quite felt pain like I felt Tuesday night. It was absolutely horrible. And same day care didn't open for another five hours at that point. And I just knew there was no way I could wait that long. So we have our kids. And right now with the COVID situation, they won't let you in the hospital with that many people. So I had to call my dad my wife called my dad and asked him to come pick me up that way he could give me a ride to the hospital so he picks me up it's getting closer to three at this point he takes me in there and I go in there I tell him what's going on I can't stand still luckily it wasn't very crowded it was pretty early in the morning so uh, there was nobody in there they got me in there within just a few minutes they take me back there they're trying to get my blood pressure and my uh, all my different vitals and stuff my heart rate all that stuff and I can't sit still and I'm puking I mean it was it was a bad deal I was I was in absolute agony and I kept telling the guy I'm sorry I'm sorry I, I can't I can't sit still I can't stand still I can't lay down I can't do anything this pain's horrible and I felt so bad for him because I was not being very cooperative but I'm sure he's used to it and I I have big respect for those people that work there at the ER because they just never know what somebody's going to walk through the door, what condition they're going to be in, what they're going to have to do. And he was patient with me, and they were uh, they gave me some pain meds. I forget what what it was, but it didn't do anything to my pain. It didn't phase it. And so they uh, they said, well, that ain't working. So they gave me a double dose of it, and still, it didn't phase it. it didn't do anything for my pain. So they kept uh, up in the dose, and they finally started giving me morphine. And after they gave me several doses of morphine, they were able to get it under control to where I could actually function again. So that was that was nice at that point. 
and so they do a uh, CT scan or whatever it's called I forget exactly what they're called and they find a kidney stone it had gone it was seven millimeters wide so not huge but it was bigger than what it's called your your reader I think I'm saying that right it's the tube between your kidney and your bladder and it had passed out of my kidney right into that tube and lodged itself and so it was basically stopping anything else from coming out of my kidney and if you don't get that taken care of right away your kidney will shut down and that's a life-threatening situation and so I obviously didn't want that to happen so they uh, they prepped me they put me in a room for a while and at this point in time I'm pretty drugged up I don't really remember a whole lot of what was going on because I was pretty well out of it but uh, I remember they put me in a room for a while until they could get the surgery ready and they took me back and they did what's called a lithotripsy on me which is where they go in they blow the stone up with ultrasonic waves basically and then they put a stint in so the fragments of the stone can pass out so I don't really remember a whole lot of that I just I remember when they uh, were giving me the anesthesia they said you're gonna feel a little bit of spicy spiciness on the side of your face and then that'll be the last thing you remember well I never really felt the spiciness I just felt like I was getting warm and then that was it I was out the next thing I remember I'm being woken up in this room and uh, recovery room and there's nobody in there except for me and a couple nurses and the anesthesiologist and they're all saying hey Silas you need to wake up and I'd kind of come out of it for a second and then I'd pass back out and they'd say hey Silas you need to wake up and they kept trying to wake me up and I kept passing back out I couldn't stay awake and they said Silas you need to wake up and I guess what the deal was is that every time I would pass back out my uh, heart rate would drop down into the 40s and my uh, blood oxygen levels would drop down to the 60s or 70s, something like that. I mean, so everything was dropping really low every time I would pass back out. And so they were trying to get me to stay awake, and they couldn't get me to stay awake. And even when I did finally wake up a little bit, they still couldn't really get everything equalized to work the way they wanted it to. So they said they are going to have to keep me overnight and put me on oxygen. So they did that, put me in, back in my room, and hooked me up to oxygen. So I was on that the rest of the night. I had to stay there. And I kind of remember that night, I didn't sleep very good because with the stint, you have to go to the bathroom all the time. And so I'd have to ring for the nurse to come in. The nurse would come in and I had these things on my legs that would kind of squeeze my legs and alternate back and forth. About every 30 seconds, they would squeeze you, your leg and that way it would keep your blood circulating, try to prevent clots uh, from forming. And so I couldn't disconnect those myself. So I'd have to ring her every every one to two hours or 45 minutes or however long it was in between, just depend on how much water I drank. And plus I was on IVs and stuff, so I had plenty of uh, liquids in my system. And she'd come in there and unhook me. I'd go to the bathroom. And it, when I would go to the bathroom, it would feel like somebody was literally punching me in the kidney as hard as they could. Oh, it was absolute agony every single time I went to the bathroom. And so I went through that all night, and they had me on pain meds all night. And then finally the next morning, my oxygen levels had stabilized, my heart rate had stabilized, and everything like that. So they let me out of the hospital later that next morning. And so I go home, and every, you know, 45 minutes to hour and a half or so, I have to go to the bathroom. And it feels like somebody's punching me day and night, day and night. And they gave me pain pills to take, and they helped some, but... They didn't help all the way. And so I was in absolute agony all week, all last week. So it was not a fun experience in any way, shape, or form. And not everybody reacts that way to the stent, but it must have just been the way the stent was in me that it was causing that reaction with me. And so that was not an enjoyable experience at all. But I made it through it. I was supposed to go in this Thursday and get the stent taken out, but the stent was causing me just as much pain almost as the stone was. And so I called them, and they said, yeah, they could get me in Tuesday morning to get it taken out. And so I was absolutely terrified of getting that taken out. So I had read varying reports of what that's like. I had talked to people. Some people say it doesn't hurt. It just feels weird. Other people say it hurts. I didn't really know what to expect. I guess it's different for everybody. And so I lay on the table, and he pulls it out. It was not a fun experience at all for me. It was pretty painful, but 
it's not that way for everybody so I'm not trying to scare anybody that might be facing that but for me it was painful but the good news is is that it only lasted you know for five six seconds and then it was over and after that I felt so much better like being able to go to the bathroom without getting punched in the kidney for the first time in a week was absolutely amazing so now I'm basically recovered I'm still in a little bit of pain and that's why I'm out here doing this today because I don't think I can handle the bumpy loader yet but I mean it's very very minor pain I mean, it's not even enough to worry about taking a, a, a Tylenol for it's it's nothing at all so for the most part I'm back to probably 90 percent by this weekend I'll, I'm sure I'll be back to 100 percent feeling pretty good everything seems to be going good and so overall it was it was a very painful experience I mean it was basically a week of suffering and I talked to the doctor about what causes the stones, how to prevent them in the future. He said the number one thing is to make sure you stay hydrated. But he said also to avoid foods with lots of sodium, which is very hard because everything is packed full of sodium because that's part of what makes food taste good. But he said avoid that. He said to avoid pops that have phosphoric acid in them, which is a lot of your dark colored pops, like root beer, Dr. Pepper, Coke, Pepsi, stuff like that. But there have been some positive experiences out of this whole situation as well. Let's see if I can dump this off of here, all that junk off of there. There we go. And so, this is going to give me that jump start that I needed to, to lose weight and to keep the weight off this time. So that's a good positive thing that came out of this whole situation. And I was eating unhealthy and drinking unhealthy. I don't drink alcohol, but I was drinking tons of sweet tea and a little bit of pop, and more than I should. That's just not a healthy lifestyle, and it causes other health problems as well, besides just kidney stones. And so I needed to not be doing that in the first place. And so, there was some, one, was some good things in this whole situation as well. It wasn't just all bad, so you have to look for the silver lining in things sometimes. I mean, you can be in a really bad situation, but if you look hard enough, you can find something good about that situation too. Perfect. That could not have gone any better. It landed in there exactly the way I wanted it to. That was absolutely perfect. Awesome. But anyway, everything worked out in the end. I got it taken care of, and there were some benefits of the whole thing. The hospital bill will not be a benefit, but that's okay. We'll work that out later. So that's all I have for this video. Like I say, if you have any questions, if you're going through a kidney stone and you have any questions and you're curious what what to expect or something like that, I can try to help you as best I know. I know that's what helped me a lot. Like I was saying earlier, that helped me through my time quite a bit, being able to read other people's experiences. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. And please like this video and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And get out there and find an adventure.